My friend. Yes, Grandpa. Okay. All right, let's do it. You look oh, great. Can you see her <laughs> here? Oh, wow. Awesome. Okay, awesome. Right. <laughs> Hello everyone, so my name is Denzel Mensa, and I would like to just kick this off with a verse from the Bible. I'm going to be reading 2 Corinthians 12, chapter 5, chapter 12, 5 to 10. 2 Corinthians. <laughs> 2 Corinthians. <laughs> I will boast about this person, but not about myself, except of my weaknesses. For if I want to boast, I will not be a fool because I will be telling the truth. But I will spare you so that no one can credit me with something beyond what he sees in me or hears from me, especially because of the extraordinary revelations. Therefore, so that I would not exalt myself, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger from Satan, to torment me so I would not exalt myself. Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For power is perfected in weakness. Therefore, I will most gladly boast all the more about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may reside in me. So I take pleasure in weaknesses, insults, catastrophes, persecutions, and impressions because of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When I read this passage from the great Apostle Paul, I think about many different things. So many different questions come to mind. So, what was this thorn that Paul was dealing with? Why did God allow him to deal with it? What does it exactly mean that my grace is sufficient for you? Why wasn't Paul able to do, or why wasn't God able to just remove it? But the question I want to focus on today actually is, I wonder if we have thorns. And in that case, what does that mean for us if we're in the same position as Paul? Now, a thorn could represent so many different things. Of course, Paul was speaking metaphorically, and although it's not entirely clear, uh, some guesses that we can get from the passage is the thorn could be a chronic illness. The thorn could be maybe something that he was just dealing with in his life, but I also believe that the thorn could be a habitual sin that we're dealing with. Um, and I feel like that would also make sense especially going off of what Paul said in Romans when he was like, oh, I do the things that I don't want to do and I don't do the things that I do want to do. It's a lot of do's. But I think that we can relate to Paul in a sense because a lot of us do at least have at least one thorn because if we didn't, then we'd be perfect and then we wouldn't need God and you know, there goes a whole spiraling problem from there. And I think that's where God is probably hitting at when he said my grace is sufficient for you. So now I want us all to think what might this thorn be? Why might not God have removed it? Sometimes I think about what my thorn may be. And I think, sometimes I even just go to God. And I'm like, God, you know, I don't lie. I don't kill people. I don't steal. But it's this one thing that I got, you know, this one thorn that I'm, like, dealing with, you know. And if you could just help me, like, remove this thorn, if you could just deal with this, if you could just help me get over this once and for all, I'd be perfect. And then all of a sudden, I see exactly what Paul, uh, Paul was saying over here about boasting in myself, not really relying on God's grace. Because now, I, there's no need for me to go to God and ask him for help every day. So, main point, we all, unless if, you know, you're somehow not in the flesh, but we all have a thorn. And it's to identify what the thorn is. But this thorn is something that's going to stick and remain in our flesh until the day of glorification. So does that mean now we just sit and allow the thorn to bother us and itch and, you know, give us pain? No. Just like Paul also said that we do not just sin so that, you know, grace may abound. We should not do that. Um, I believe that if we're continuing to speak metaphorically, the way to treat this thorn is to give it daily ointment. And this ointment can be represented in ways such as prayer. It could be represented in ways such as spending time with God, spending time with other people of the body of Christ. And I believe that in applying this ointment to the thorn, although the thorn will never vanish, although the thorn will never pop out until the day of glorification when Christ returns for us, that will dilute the thorn's pain. And I think that 
if we learn to apply this ointment every day, whether it be in the morning, at night, or numerous times throughout the day, both morning and night throughout the day, then the itch of this thorn, the pain of this thorn, will not bother us anymore. But I think that a lot of us have the problem that the Israelites once had, um, where we're trying to store the manna from yesterday and use today. Now, for those of you who may not know about that story, pretty much the Israelites were complaining to Moses that, oh, you know, we're hungry, where's our food? We had better chance off at um, with staying with Pharaoh. And God said, I'm going to provide you all manna from heaven. But here's the catch. When you go out to get that manna, only get the food that you need for that day. I will provide more for you tomorrow. And some Israelites did not listen. Go figure. They went, they stored more manna than they should have for the next day. And the next thing you know, the Bible says that it started to rot. I think that a lot of us, our manna for today, our manna that we use for today is that ointment that I'm talking about. It's our daily bread. There's a reason why God said that we should make it daily bread. Because if you leave it past 24 hours, it'll spoil. A lot of us try to go throughout the whole entire week from the bread that we received on Sunday. And then we wonder why our thorn is itching throughout the week. We wonder why our thorn keeps on giving us a lot of pain. It's because we fail to apply that ointment to whatever thorn that we may be dealing with. I believe in order to deal with this thorn, not only do we just continue to receive our daily bread, not only do we continue to apply the ointment every moment we start feeling that thorn, that itch, that temptation, but I believe that we should also start eating elephants. Once again, speaking metaphorically, if we were to take time <laughs> to eat an elephant, you cannot eat a whole elephant in just one sitting. In order to overcome a habit, you have to take it day by day. You have to cut up the elephant into small pieces, eat it here and there, you know, get full, wait till the next day. In essence, for we continue to speak metaphorically, I believe that the way that most of us, the majority of us, or all of us, can overcome the problems that we're dealing with, this thorn, and the way that we can deal with it on a daily basis, is spending time with, spending time with God the way that Jesus did. And I believe that this is why Jesus had such favor with God, not just because he was God, not just because he was the son of God, but also he was still in the flesh. So that means that I believe that he was capable of sin. And if this was not the case, then Satan would not have tried to tempt him. However, because Jesus spent so much time applying ointment, because Jesus spent so much time soaking time with God, he always felt God's presence. And it's just like if you have a girlfriend and his father's, uh, her father is always with you, then any type of thoughts that you have with that girlfriend that may be, you know, sexual, whatever it may be, you will be careful or three times as careful to not do those things, especially if you're close to the father. In this case, Jesus was so close to God the father that his love for God overpowered his desire to sin, although he was in flesh. I think that we could learn a lot from that. Us being Christians, I want to heavily urge us to seek out whatever thorn may be in our flesh. Spend time applying that ointment daily. Spend time in your word. Spend time with God. Spend time getting to know God and falling more in love with him. And then eventually, you'll see that that itch will start to dissipate. That elephant will start to disappear. And the more time you spend with the body of Christ, the less time you'll be spending, you know, scratching that thorn or, you know, dealing with the sins that we may be dealing with on a daily basis. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm all warmed up now, so I'm a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> I, had, I had so much trouble like trying to punch it together. I was like, dang, this is such a new concept that I just don't want to like, glaze over. But it's like, I don't want to take like 30 minutes. <laughs> so I was, felt kind of rushed, but you know. And the whole like dating thing, too, you were like, your father was around, like, you're beautiful. So, thank you. I really appreciate that. That means a lot. Yeah, I like the, I like the father.
Yeah, that's good. Thanks. I'm glad that we looked at it.